Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Grilling JR with the voice of professional wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Jim, how are you, man? Pretty good, Conrad. Ready to roll today. She has some good questions from everybody, and I like these shows. They let you know what folks are thinking about that you might not perceive. Good stuff. We have a good show today. It's going to be a great show today. We greatly appreciate all of you tuning in. We're going to be doing something kind of fun. We're throwing you the keys to the show today. We're calling it Ask JR Anything. And of course, the easiest, best place to ask questions where we're going to be running all of our polls and all that is over on YouTube. That's grilling JR on youtube.com. Uh, we are, uh, really close to a milestone. Love to have your support there. So if you don't mind, do us a favor, it's absolutely free. Go hit the subscribe button at grilling JR on youtube.com and uh, be sure to turn on that notifications bell. Jim and I are going to be going live here in the new year. And there's so much to talk about. Uh, I guess we should uh, just jump right into it, man. We got a ton of questions. I don't think there's any chance we get to all of them, but the overwhelming sentiment from most everyone comes from my man, Tom Glenn. Most important question. How you feeling JR? <laughs> well, thanks Tom. I feel pretty good. Uh, I had my staples out of my hip surgery removed this week. So that was good. 28 of them. Just cut them in half and pull them out. So it's not pleasant, but it's terrible and it'll help my healing. That's, that's a new development port that's in my chest right now that I was getting manually fed antibiotics come out, uh, this week as well. So we're making some progress just to, it's got to test your patience. No doubt about it. I, for one, am all for a good news update from Jim Ross, and we're pulling for you and excited to see you uh, getting back to life and moving around and enjoying life and back behind the microphone, hopefully sooner rather than later. Ben Jones says, what were your impressions on the first WrestleMania? And what did you think about its impact on the business at the time? So Jim, that would have been March of 85. You're still working with Bill Watts at the time. What were you, uh, what did you think of WrestleMania and what did you think the impression would be on the wrestling business? I was very impressed, quite frankly, that, it's, uh, it had is a spectacle and, uh, well promoted visuals that you'll never forget. So very positive, positively uh, affected by WrestleMania. I thought it was going to change the business forever and it did. There's no doubt, man. People are still talking about, uh, WrestleMania. I mean, their WrestleMania moments, who would have thought that that would become such a big part of pop culture. I mean, for lack of a better word, it's sort of the, the super bowl of, of professional wrestling. And it's been positioned as that way for gosh, 40 years now. That's hard to imagine that there would be a show that would be as well branded in the mainstream in pop culture as just the word WrestleMania, right? I don't think that'll happen again. Might not, <clears throat> might not. They may have caught, <clears throat> pardon me. They may have caught, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, lightning in a bottle. It's well promoted. Amazing array of stars <clears throat> that had never been collected. before. So it was uh, impressive and, and, and it hasn't stopped. Sears cars loaded. It's almost too big. It's hard to focus on anything. Oh, but in any event, it was, uh, the health of business. High tides raise all ships. And I, I believe that. so good. It's good. It was a positive for the business. I'm very happy to just, I, you know, I was a fan at that time working in the rest of the business fan at that time. Enjoyed, uh, the experience of watching as a fan. Here's a inside baseball question from Patrick Williams. I know you'll appreciate this sort of question here, Jim. Have you noticed the difference in WWE production quality since leaf fitting took over? Does it seem more sports like to you? Now, if you're listening to this and you're not familiar with leaf fitting, well, there's no shame in that. WWE rehired him maybe the first week of this year, early January, 2024. But before he came to WWE, once upon a time, he worked on shows like college game day, the college football playoff, Monday night football. I mean, so he has done a lot of big time mainstream professional sports, specifically football presentations. And a lot of people have remarked on Twitter that the shows look or feel different 
so far. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> they seem to be, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, less ha ha as Patterson would say, and more, uh, and more serious presentation. I think fans respond to that better because you're not trying to drill them with so much, uh, you know, weak storylines, storylines from based on reality, or at least that's what and people relate to that a lot easier than pure fiction that's sensationalistic and, and people just can't, you know, in, totally invest in. I'm not familiar with this gentleman, uh, but, uh, if he's the one responsible, he's doing a good job because it's, uh, you can tell it's a little different and one that I enjoy. Chip Maxey says, JR, you've always said you don't want to know the finish of a match to be able to call the action to the best of your ability. But would you want to know about a dusty finish before a big match? No, not really. Same, same, same philosophy. I'm better. I'm better off surprised <clears throat> and reacting naturally and normally for the moment. than I would be uh, otherwise. So, uh, no, I, I have that philosophy. I, if I don't know it's better off for me as far as interpreting the story. I think my philosophy, and I think I'll stick with it. Um, S and chance says, why isn't the great Mike Tanay not in the WWE hall of fame? That's a great question. I mean, there's a lot of people who are deserving to be in the hall of fame, but it does feel like, man, when Mike Tanay walked away, he kind of walked away for good. I'm really shocked. We haven't seen him pop up for more than just Don West's induction into the impact hall of fame. Do you think Mike Tanay joins the WWE hall of fame someday? Unlikely. Because of his uh, lack of tenure there, but is he deserving? Absolutely. Mike is an outstanding broadcaster and a credit to the business. So, uh, I miss him on television. I think he did a great job and nice guy. He's friend. I consider Mike a friend. So, uh, it's missed out about it. Speaking of somebody else who's going to be missed the, uh, great question we got about stings retirement. What an amazing night to witness and welcome back. Can you tell us about your favorite sting moment? Do you have a favorite sting moment of all the moments that you've seen of his career? Or maybe the ones that you've called. Probably the one that sticks out the most is the first one that Shivani and I did in 1988 there in Greensboro, actually, as we talked about had not, uh, I think that the first one is hard to beat the first, first one. He had all those great matches with flair and had some good matches with lure and so forth. Very fun others. But I think the very first outing for him was so important to make an impression in a positive way. And he succeeded. So uh, I'd say the very first time I saw seeing in a big match scenario nineteen eighty eight sticks out in my mind probably better than you. RCS eighty eight says when World Championship Wrestling became WCW Saturday night in April of ninety two, they did a two out of three falls feature every week. Whose idea was that? Why was it abandoned after a few weeks? I would suggest it might be Kip Pry's idea. I'm not sure, but obviously it was just to increase ratings and get people hooked on a story, get a three chapter story. In, in other words, three falls, three chapters. And, uh, at that time, two out of three fall matches were not, uh, utilized, overutilized. So it's a little something different. And, uh, it's just, I, I'm, I'm guessing it was about, seems like it was around the time Kip Fry was in charge. And if, if so, then he would have signed off on the idea. Uh, Andrew, uh, or I'm sorry, Chris says, uh, as the head of talent relations at the time, what was your responsibility the night of the unfortunate injury to draws and his role with the company to take care of him after his career ended? Was that your responsibility or what, what did you have to do in that dry circumstance? Cause I just can't imagine that responsibility being on someone from the quote unquote office to handle all of that. I was involved. Uh, it, this is the one that made the final final as far as, uh, taking care of the compensation to compensate draws his injury. It's very horrible. I was the stone cold at that. He got hurt. 
uh, taking a uh, feature at a, at a deer hunting lodge. So, uh, I wasn't even there on that. Yeah, it's one of the rare TVs that I missed. And, uh, it was just hard to believe that we, we got the call. Just keep hoping that it's not as bad as it seems. And unfortunately it was worse than we thought. So, uh, but I was involved in that process. Vince is the one that led the charge, uh, and legal. So, uh, but it was a challenging scenario. I didn't sleep that night at all. Ross is one of our favorite guys, a likable, always had a great personality and you hate to see anybody get hurt, especially somebody that has, is so well liked and respected as Darren Ross talk. Let's do, uh, do a fun one here. Gavin best wants to know what would be a dream match for you to call if anything was possible. I know we don't do a lot of fantasy booking here, Jim, but throughout time and space, two guys in their prime, you could be on that call. JR at his best, two in ring performers at their best. Who would be in the ring? Oh, I think, uh, there's a lot of maybe and Jack Briscoe would be involved in the match. Uh, without question, so, you know, Briscoe and Kurt Angle would be good. Uh, for example, I like wrestling and those guys provide, would provide great wrestling. So, uh, it was something like that. And there are so many others, but, uh, Briscoe and Kurt Angle would be something I would be, uh, jumping at the bit, chomping at the bit, I should say, uh, to be involved in. So they're just, they're just so good at what they did and they, everything they did made sense. So you're not trying to process ridiculous information, trying to process realism. And they were very real. Uh, Michael has a fun question. He says, I know you've worked on multiple books, but have you ever thought about having a film done on your life and work, whether it's a documentary or a biopic, is that something you would consider? Well, you know, sure. If it's going to make some money and it's going to be a interesting project to, to, uh, consume. Those things take a whole life of their own. I mean, there, there may be years in development. So I've never looked at it real, uh, you know, seriously, but to say I'd turn it down would be falsehood. I sure as I, I, that would be fun, but it is a massive undertaking. Massive. I saw something online the other day where some show was getting ready to get, they're talking about it being produced and it had been in development four and a half years. Hell, I don't have, I don't know if I got four and a half years left to maybe said it. And then you get into the creative process. I was surprised and pleasantly. So that the, uh, Von Eric movie did as well as it did creatively. They all seem to be on the same page. And that's probably because there weren't too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, Kevin Von Eric seemed to be the point man as far as the Von Eric family was concerned. Uh, and when you get a scenario like that, it makes it a little bit easier. I can only imagine how it would have been if you had to tease all the brothers, for example, in this scenario. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I really, it's just a major undertaking. It's a young man's business. And maybe someday somebody will have the idea to do something based on my three books. You know, uh, our next book is imminent and we would have already been out promoting if I hadn't gotten sick and all these things. So we'll catch up and, and we'll promote the hell out of it. You know what? Let's do it right now. Jrbook50.com is where you can find it. I've actually got mine and uh, I encourage you to get yours. I got an early copy. You can pre-order right now. Jrbook50.com. Everything you've heard Jim say about this book is legit, man. It is an easy read. There's a lot of shorter stories. It's a good one <clears throat> for the John as a friend of ours might say, Kenny Omega had this to say about JR's book. Jim Ross hasn't just been the narrator guiding us along our journey in pro wrestling. He's become the voice synonymous with wrestling. It's been the greatest honor to have experienced his work as a fan and also to have benefited working alongside him in AEW, arguably one of, if not the greatest IWGP world heavyweight champion of all time. And of course, stalwart with AEW, this book covers a who's who. Uh, during a truly legendary career, celebrating 50 years in the business 
You can pre-order the book right now, jrbook50.com. That's jrbook50.com. And a matter of fact, Jim, I don't know that you've seen this. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but we're going to surprise you. We got a new piece of merch supporting the book too. It's available now at grillingjrts.com. Celebrating 50 years in professional wrestling. Get your new Jim Ross shirt at grillingjrts.com. It's a nice little one-two punch, Jim. You get the book at jrbook50.com. You get the t-shirt at grillingjrts.com. Show JR a little love today. It's a good way to uh, spend the day, huh? Yeah, that's a very nice surprise. Thanks very much. Nice little piece of merch. Always appreciate it. I never really clicked on merch. I, I, I sell a few things here, there, and yon, but I think it's because the effort that I put in or the effort that I don't put in selling t-shirts and things like that, but always willing to make an extra buck or two. So appreciate that, Connor. That was nice. You guys to do that. Nice surprise. Let's uh, talk about some more nice surprises. Uh, we just recently saw a brand new open for dynamite. So we had a new entrance and a new song and a new set, and it was a whole new look and feel new graphics, the whole deal. And Moxley nightmare over on uh, social media says what improvements does AEW need to make to get to the next level? And how do they go about this? There's been a lot of discussion from all the different talking heads and pretty much anybody who has a podcast or a voice in the internet wrestling community. And boy, everybody has an opinion on how does AEW grow? Because clearly AEW is the biggest competitor to WWE and the biggest challenger brand. And, you know, we've seen their business continue to flourish. I mean, as folks are listening to this, there was a huge show last night in Boston, big business. And of course, right behind that was Okada. And right before that was Osprey. And it feels like there's a lot of good momentum, especially with things last match and things like that with AEW. What are some things that you've seen in all your years in the business that become like the next plateau? How do you get to the next plateau in wrestling? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. You get more talent over. You, you get, you, uh, you give more talents like Okada, Osprey, etc. the opportunity to get exposed on your television and consequently get what it could get over getting talent over is always going to be the key thing. So I think they're doing a good job of that. Anxious to see where the journey with uh, Okada goes. He's so spectacular. So he's more than spectacular. He's extraordinary. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I'm glad we got him. So uh, anyway, it's uh, it was good. Uh, good for me. I, I think they're doing a good job in that area. Getting new talent over. That's the key to the whole scenario. I can't wait to see what's next for AEW. I mean, certainly they've got a lot of momentum on the heels of the sting match. And now with, with, uh, Mercedes Monet and certainly will Ospreay and my goodness, Okada, it's just a function now of seeing who helps get to the next level first. And everybody wanted to know that what was going on way back when Taylor Lunsford says, JR, how did your radio fan base react? When you left WCW for the World Wrestling Federation, was there a backlash or was it a fairly smooth transition? Great question, Taylor. It was fairly smooth, I think. Uh, I uh, some of them were, disapp- were disappointed of the fact that we might end the radio show, and that was never the case. It ended up ending, but it wasn't premeditated. So I think that was the issue. Some people were just apprehensive that the radio show was going away. And at that time, the radio show was a great vehicle for pro wrestling. You know, we were on a, uh, hundred, hundred thousand watt station, WSB in Atlanta. It went in 37 States at night. And that's when we were on, uh, barely preempted, et cetera, et cetera. So it was all good. It was good. And they didn't want to lose that. That was the, that was an asset that they were cultivating and enjoying. So. They didn't want to lose that asset, but I think at the end of the day, it all worked out well for us. You know, I'm sitting here talking to you and this is kind of radio yeah. in a way. Sure. So, so, uh, you know, I'm, it worked out, it worked out fine as things normally do. Your attitude stays positive and you don't get the boo-boo face, uh, you know, make it work. We made it work. Made it work indeed. Uh, here's a question that I know you're excited to talk about. Yoshi wants to know, did the black hat farms, cannabis farm in Oklahoma ever get up and running? What is going on with black hat farms, Jim? Oh, it's open. 
stores open. The uh, dispensary is open in Tulsa. Uh, we're going to open a second store in Tulsa, it looks like. So it's uh, doing well. Uh, it's, it's what they call a soft opening. There's an open, there's a, we have a storefront and product in Tulsa right now that folks can take advantage of area. So, uh, hope they will. I'd love to hear, I'd love to have the feedback on what to think of our little retail operation. So it's good. It's, uh, it's, it's growing, you know, it's, again, it's one of those deals where you got to be patient and let the business grow into something that's viable. And we have every optimism that's going to happen. Do you know, uh, the, uh, location there in Tulsa or can we share it? Or can we just say that we'll, we'll send it out on Twitter later or something like that? Gosh, I don't know the exact address to be, but you know, I'm sure we'll find it online. Yeah. We'll, uh, uh we'll get that together and we'll be sure to tweet it out and let everybody know where they can go support black hat farms. Yeah, please. That's great. Uh, the mentor over on uh, social media wants to know when you were involved with talent relations, did you read any books on how to deal with people? If so, did you have a favorite? That's a great question. Any, any management books you can recommend to people who are listening to this? I didn't have, I didn't, I'll, I'll say this. It's, it's a poor answer. I didn't have time to read books. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that's a good defense. Uh, it isn't, but I use my practical experience and personal interactions with the talent, manage them and reading a, a, a book about some other topic that's uh, related in a loose way to managing talent sometimes would not apply to pro wrestlers, different, uh, scenario, different atmosphere. So the answer is no. Uh, should I have good chance? I mean, you can always learn something, but I didn't do that. Michael double M says, I'm glad good old Jr is back and doing well on the latest episode. Jim said he'd signed the new deal for a year. If the deal is for a year, could this perhaps be Jr's last year in the business as a commentator? I think so. I think so. It's realistic to think that way. You know, I'm 72 years old. I feel good. Uh, I'm getting healthier every day, which is great. So, but I can think realistically, this could be my last year. And, and more than likely will that's to be determined that's between my, me, my health and Tony Khan seeing how, uh, wants to utilize me right now. It's a good plan because I'm essentially working as I understand it, uh, paper, paper views only. So, uh, that's where you'll find me on once a month working as paper as, as, as the plan goes as we speak. We all know that in pro wrestling, things change on a fly and things can be different. Uh, but I don't, I don't think so in this occasion. I think a lot right now, what I'll be doing. So, and that's fine with me. You know, I get to go to the big shows, all big matches on the big shows. You know, I was not expecting to call two matches at Sting's, uh, retirement. Glad that I did. Uh, the extra match that they had me call was outstanding. So, uh. Tony Khan's got a good feel for what he likes for me to do and, and, and my skill set, and so forth. So right now, my, my situation is, I think I'm going to be married to the paper, which is good. Maybe it'll help the buy race a little bit. Storytelling will be a little different, sound different, be different. See how that works out. He talks about wrestling being on the fly sometimes. And boy, speaking of being on the fly, as we've been recording this morning, we've got some breaking news from WWE Thunderbolt Patterson is going to be joining the WWE hall of fame as part of the 2024 class. He's still with us. My man's like 82 years old. I think, uh, born in Waterloo, Iowa, and now taking his rightful place amongst the all time greats in the WWE hall of fame. And. I know he's somebody that uh, you're pretty familiar with and, and, yeah. s- and certainly I'm very thankful that he gets to be here with us when this moment happens. I mean, the idea that we get to celebrate a legend in his eighties on stage, boy, that's a, uh, that's a pretty special deal. What do you make of this news? Thunderbolt Patterson, a hall of famer. Congratulations to Thunderbolt. He deserves it. Uh, thanks. He went through to achieve stardom, earn a living. Uh, in a, in a very racist, uh, oriented business, 
pro wrestling was at that time, especially then. You no, know, it's it's just it's a shame how some of the old Caucasian promoters uh, looked on. You know, we can, we I remember Cowboy talked to somebody about a uh, black athlete, and and uh, and Bill said I got a good talent, blah blah blah. I was trying to get got booked, and uh, the answer from the other end on conversation was we already have one already have one the one was an african-american so that's that's ridiculous cowboy just saw it through the whole damn thing he just draw money sell tickets that's what it's all about it's everybody happy making money so i think that was the situation there uh thunderbolt went through a lot of hell but he's strong and his belief strong in his presence and uh, thunderbolt did a lot paving the way for other subsequently other black athletes to star and make a living in pro wrestling congratulations to him he's he did he's well deserved i got I wrote this one of those ideas where you think man i should have thought of that great idea and it is a great idea congratulations both. that'll make my old friend like jerry briscoe jerry briscoe was a Tag team partner of uh, Thunderbolt Patterson. That'll make me very, very happy. That, that makes me happy. Uh, Chad Fletcher says there's lots of what ifs and why didn'ts in the world of professional wrestling, such as why didn't the undertaker win the intercontinental and become a triple crown winner where well, I never even thought about that. What is one of them that Jr. finds curious Jim? One of mine would be. How did they not do flair and Hogan at WrestleMania eight? I know that predates your tenure by a year. That felt yeah. like just an absolute no brainer. Are there any other, like, why didn't they do that? That you have throughout wrestling history? Well, it's all going to come back to politics, right? Somebody didn't want to work with somebody else. Somebody didn't want to do the finish. Somebody didn't want to do the job. Such a silly reasons, not good reasons, silly reasons, but flair and Hogan at WrestleMania eight seemed to be a no brainer. Yeah. Why, why it didn't happen to me? You know, he, Keep peeling the onion back to see what you're going to find. And what I generally find is I want to do the honors. I want to do, they want to do business. And that's not a good reason for not doing a big main event match like that one. That's a historic match. And it, it came early. It came, you know, WrestleMania 8 was brand new. That, no doubt that would have been a great match to add to that card. Sad it didn't happen. The People's Doc. Uh, has a fun question for you. We love talking about barbecue. You can pick up your all purpose seasoning at jrsbbq.com. People's doc wants to know, do you like dry or wet rub on wings? Uh, I'm a dry rub guy. I use JR's uh, all purpose seasoning on wings, steak, a uh, variety of things, but the dry rub is less messy and, uh, seems to work best for me personally. It's a matter of personal taste. You got those good ones on the wet side as well. I just happen to be a dry rub guy because I sell that product and it's one of our best sellers because it works really well. Tastes great. On red note. Great stuff, man. JRsbbq.com. Uh, world's biggest fan says, Jim, I know you and Jim Cornette don't talk much anymore, but how cool would it be if you could get you two on a show at some, at some event? I'm like you. We don't have to have the same views to be friends. We need more of that. Anyway, I know the old fans would like to see something. Love you both. I mean, never say never, right? It's not like you would corner your cross. You just, you know, no. you work for AW and he thankfully doesn't. No, he's got his own beliefs. Yeah. And, and I, and I respect that, but th there's no animosity or no, uh, negativity existing between Corny and I, we've been friends too long for that to happen. Do we always agree on things? Of course not. That's just human nature. So, uh, uh, but I appreciate and respect his opinion. Yes. I don't agree with them all. So what? That's not a big issue to me. So, but he's a smart guy and has a lot to offer the wrestling business in general. In my opinion, I know that's a controversial opinion, but, uh, shouldn't be. I'm, no, it shouldn't be. People should be able to express their opinions. 
Uh, and, uh, I think he does a great job of that. He, he's built a unique business with his own podcast and so forth. So merch and so forth. So I'm a Cornet fan, no doubt about it. Yeah. How could you not be? I mean, if you saw his work back in the day on TV, you know what he can do as a performer in wrestling. You don't have to right. absolutely positively agree with all of his real life opinions in order to appreciate no. his work as a performer. Exactly. It's almost silly to think that way. It is. Um, let's see what you're thinking about this. What are your thoughts on the Baker on Baker Mayfield getting that three year, hundred million dollar deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Jay, the K that was your big Oklahoma guy. What'd you think of Baker in the off season, getting that big deal? Well, Baker's a friend of mine. I've known him personally since he walked on at OU back in the day, uh, from Texas tech, uh, great kid. A great leader, unbelievable leader, big time in the locker room. So I'm proud for him. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm happy that he persevered, went through a variety of offensive coordinators and head coaches and teams. So, uh, good for Baker. And, and he, he seemed to fit in that locker room very well. He's a locker room guy. I mean, he's a player's quarterback. So always full of energy and enthusiasm. So I was happy for him and he's still young and he seems to be healthy. So, uh, just hope knocking on wood here that he stays that way and, and can lead the Tampa Bay bucks into success and prosperity. He's got, he's still got it. He still got it. And let's just hope that he delivers it, uh, for the bucks come this fall. I'm looking forward to it. I, uh, I'm anxious to see how this, uh, draft shakes out and the NFL is going to look a little different next year. Uh, speaking of the NFL, Andrew K has a question about another former NFL player who's transitioned. How do you think Pat McAfee's doing on commentary? What advice would you give him? Of course, he is the voice of SmackDown these days and, and they're having a lot of fun over there. What do you, uh. What do you think of the job Pat McAfee has done behind the desk, Jim? I'm impressed. Pat McAfee has impressed me, no doubt about it, with his work. Uh, surprising how good he is. Ready? Pays attention. He studies. Got uh, you know I even noticed on his show that airs on ESPN at noon Eastern time that he uh, incorporates a lot of wrestling jargon language into his show. So he's living the dream and, uh, and he seems to be respectful. Uh, again, uh, I appreciate guys that study the game and yes. have pro product knowledge and he doing that, uh, good hire for WWE. Yeah. He's a, he's a supreme talent. Shout out to, uh, Pat McAfee, dude, just a uh, trailblazer. Uh, here's one from, uh, Callan, another football question. We'll get some of these out of the way. I know a lot of our listeners across the pond don't like when you and I veer off into football too much. Hi, Jim. Hope all is well. What's the vibe like in Norman for OU fans making the move to the SEC this summer? Well, what do you, what is the Oklahoma fan base thinking about the SEC? Let's go. Okay. Let's play. We got the schedules written. We know who we're playing and when we're playing. You know, you and I've talked about this, about your school, Alabama and my school, the Sooners, uh, playing each other uh, in November. Uh, and that's going to be extraordinary. That'll be a ma massive national game of the week. Uh, but I think they're just, let's go, you know, you can't, uh, can't, can't delay the, the inevitable and the inevitable is that we're going to play football in the SEC and hopefully with the recruiting that the team is doing, Coach Venables, our head coach, uh, building up his staff uh, and all that, uh, I think it's. I think we're doing good. I think they're doing all they can do to prepare for this journey. It's going to be an adventurous journey, to say the very least. Oh, you to go from the Big Twelve to the most competitive athletic conference in in, in America. So, uh, should be fun. Should be a fun year. I'm, I uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to go to some more. I didn't get to any games last year because of my illness and so forth. Uh, not to dwell on that crap, but, uh, I'm going to change that philosophy. I'm going to try to go to some games 
if nothing else, you know, I got a suite there in Oklahoma with my buddy Wallace Marsh. And uh, I didn't go to a single game last year, which breaks my heart. I was like, you see less time to spend around great friends like Wallace and his family and his buddies. Uh, but, and, and, and to watch, watch the games. And in a town, I got a, I got a bedroom, I got a closet. I, I live there. That's good. Um, I think we're going to be okay, Conrad. You know, is there going to be a walk in the park? Of course, of course not. It's going to be interesting to say the least. I can't wait. And not wait. Ben Tramer wants to know as an employee and someone who has constantly shown support and passion for AEW, do former colleagues, tribalistic criticisms of AEW affect your relationships? Thanks for all the amazing years, JR. And here's to many more. I mean, you sort of address that with, uh, with, with, with your views on Jim Cornette, but has there been a different conversation with someone else that maybe you thought, and this guy's just too negative. I just can't deal. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't take my time. Try to convince somebody to see my way of thinking. Right. And I'm in a matter that's so subjective and that's what this is. Uh, it's like I was talking about, you know, somebody's going to take exception to me saying that the SEC is the most competitive athletic conference in America. Some will disagree with that. Some will say, well, no, that's the PAC 10. That's uh, the ACC. That's whatever big 12, whatever it may be. Uh, but I'm not going to try to stop my way of thinking, try to convince you or anybody else that I'm right with my opinion. It's an opinion. That's all it is. It's my take. And whether it's right or wrong, it's my take. You don't have to agree. with it. You don't have to sign in. You ain't got to sign on. Just you know, be kind enough to listen like you're doing now. So uh, that's kind of how I see that. James has an interesting question for you. And, well, there's no way for you to really know it, but I am curious if you had a guess. In the time now with Vince out of WWE, do you think there would ever be a scenario where Dr. Hart and her family would consider letting Owen into the WWE hall of fame? What do you think could be if ever done for WWE to work towards mending that relationship? Of course, Martha clearly never forgave Vince understandable. And, and that was just a non-starter, but now with Vince on the outside of WWE, do you think Martha could change? Her stance a little bit. I think she could. Will she is another question. Maybe the bigger question is, will she? I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. It's a good question. That's why these Q and A's are so entertaining. Sometimes you get questions that you don't expect. Right. Uh, so I don't know. Good question though. Good question. So we'll time will tell. You know, as always, time will tell. I can see it be, being able to be worked out a lot easier. If, uh, now that McMahon is out of the picture, so that was her, that was her roadblock. Right. So, uh, see, it, 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 put it this way. It wouldn't surprise me whatsoever, but I don't have any information to change my philosophy of that. I think with him gone, it increases the chances of Owen, the hall of fame. God knows he's deserving. Yes. That's not, that's never been an issue. Yes. But, uh, if Martha likes it and feels good about the comfort zone, then why not? I think it's great. She's so, it's such a pleasure to work with. She's not angry at pro wrestling anymore. It doesn't seem to me like, and she's heartbroken. Things happen with Owen like they did as we all would be and all are and have been. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's interesting, Connie. It's a good question. Interesting. But I'd say that the odds of Owen being in, uh, inducted to the WWE hall of fame have increased immensely since Vince resigned his post. Well, I, for one would like to see it. And, uh, as a lot of Cubs fans would say, there's always next year. Uh, Mike wants to know what does Jr. consider to be his most difficult conversation as head of talent relations? Man, I'm sure you had a lot of uncomfortable ones, but is there one that stands out where it's like, dude, that was the worst. Well, not without, uh, making somebody drop their drawers and, and be embarrassed. There were a lot of times, you know, anytime you talk to a 
discipline issue uh, with the talent. It's personal. It uh, should be kept that way. You never go back in time and see where I lambasted a talent because a uh, resulting meeting that we had. Right. I try to keep those things private. That's the way to do it. Uh, but there are a lot of those meetings. I mean, a lot of them. top guys. And most often the top guys are the biggest problems because they you have more to lose as an administrator if they weren't available than not. So, uh, it's just hard to peel down one because then you're, you're kind of putting the finger on somebody that's, that doesn't deserve this sort of recognition. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lodge somebody because they had a shitty attitude. Right. And we had to have a conference about it. Just to, just to placate the dirt lovers. I'm going to do it. Uh, Gerard McIntyre says, Hey, JR massive fan. Can't wait for the new book. Met you on your last few book tours in the UK. Are you hoping to be fit enough to travel and do a signing tour for the new book? That's a good question. Are you going to do any international stops? You think for the book tour? I, I'm willing to, but you know, as soon as I get a little bit healthier. Yeah, absolutely. I love book signing and I love going to the UK. I, you know, I've had a great fan following there and a base there for a long time. And so we don't plan on leaving the UK fans high and dry. It's just, it just got to give me a chance to get healthy. And, uh, if we, that opportunity then arises then you bet your ass, I'll be there. I love that. You bet your ass. Uh, here's a really fun question. I know you'll get behind since you've got the barbecue company and now you've got the cannabis company. Justin Maddox wants to know any plans for THC infused barbecue sauce. I hadn't thought of it. I'm trying to get one thing off the ground at a time, but I'll say this like any other marketer. If it sells and moves the needle, I'd be interested in, in uh discussing it. But as officially as we speak today, uh, there's no plans for it. And can you imagine people getting uh, their <clears throat> chocolate cake from barbecue? Well, uh, Boston T guy says, uh, thanks for providing years of content and being the voice of so many memorable moments. I was wondering what's gotten you through these trying times. What has shifted your focus off of this debilitating disease? Glad you're doing better. The world is better with you in it. Love you. Jr. Man, we got so many messages like that. Thanks for sharing that Boston T guy. What, what has been your motivation? Are you just motivated to get back behind yeah. the broadcast booth? Is that it? I think so. I just get back in my spot. Yes. You know, I, I take a lot of pride in what, what happens at the announce table. And, uh, so yeah, I just get back in, in action, get back in the game. So I guess uh, to answer this question, just to stay in the game, stay in the game. is my number one priority. Uh, cause what's next? retirement or death or something. So I don't like the alternatives of what's left. Uh, I just don't. So see how it works out at the end of the day, as we said earlier, but golly, uh, I've been blessed with amazing. It's not over, not over. You know, I, I was thinking this last night, uh, I think it was last night watching, uh, Osprey and Ryan Danielson do their thing and uh, thinking how amazing that match should be. Yes. When they have it in St. Louis. And I'm hopeful that I'm a part of the booking card, uh, being utilized in uh, St. Louis for the next paper. So, uh, cause that's, those are the matches that you circle on portfolio that this is going to be special. Yes. This is going to be really, really good. And if you did a really good job connecting the dots, then uh, you're going to be a part of a, just a absolute masterpiece and Osprey and Danielson potential masterpiece. I don't see, I could be not, and I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it too. I can't wait. That is, uh, Going on sale this weekend, I think, or maybe it's already on sale. AWTIX.com. I can't believe this is real, but, uh, St. Louis coming your way dynasty. 
it's finally going to happen. Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson in a squared circle here in America, pick up tickets to see it in St. Louis on Sunday, April 21st, AWTIX.com. Top of the morning to you, by the way, this episode is brought to you by St. Patrick's day. Shamrock shavers manscaped this year. Don't just chase the rainbows, make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders in below the kilt care. Say goodbye to your clover forest with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use the code Jim Ross for 20% off plus free shipping. Ever since I've used Manscaped, I can proudly say that I found my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Meet your new lucky charm just in time for St. Patrick's Day, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Check this out. This trimmer comes with not one, but two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, one for a classic trim and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires equipped with dual led spotlights. You can navigate your shamrock patch in peace or age. You'll make a mess. Well, fear not. This wonder is waterproof shaved by the misty moors under a waterfall, or even during a rain dance and it's compact case makes it an ideal companion ready for an adventure or last minute plans. Trimming the hedges in your Irish garden isn't just for below the belt. Complete the look with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit, plus the handyman electric face shaver. Whether you're sculpting your beard or cleaning up your neckline, there are always the right tools for the job at Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use our code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with our friends at Manscaped. Take care of that hairy leprechaun, will you, for God's sakes? Goodness gracious. Hey, I want to give a special shout out. We we're recording early here on a Wednesday morning, and we've got a live studio audience where you can be a part <laughs> of our show when you join us over at adfreeshows.com. Want to give a shout out to Eric Green and Coach Keith Morrison and Amy Vaughn in the house. Coach Keith is here. Oh, Lindsay's in the house. Mark Nelson's here. Nathan's here. Adam Patterson or Patterson. My apologies. Denovius is down to clown. Shout out to Matthew. Not Denovius. Den- Denovius is here, Conrad. Weak ass Denovius. Can you believe it? Weak as tater water, <laughs> as my grandfather used to say. No, seriously, we appreciate you guys being a part of our live studio audience. And we got a bunch of questions from those folks too. Denovius, our great close personal friend, says if AEW was able to land Shelton Benjamin now, what role would you see him best in? I guess Shelton did an interview recently. Uh, our, our crack producer, Dave Silva said that he read somewhere that Shelton Benjamin was open to the idea of working in AEW, And I was like, yeah, you think, um, what would you, what would you think would be a good fit for Shelton? If he were to make the leap to AEW? Well, you get him a single run with somebody that can actually can really wrestle. Yep. Uh, and let him show skills. And then you found a partner for him and you let children's experience help build a foundation for a, a, a tag team. Well, there you go. I'm a big fan of Shelton Benjamin, uh, as, as we all know, you know, that one class, I said this before and people would roll their eyes, which is cool. But you're expressing an opinion far be it from me to knock your opinion. But when we recruited Cena and Brock and Horton, he's to best athlete of that group was Shelton. Right. Shelton's issue was personality. He's connecting with the audience. So, but I love Shelton. It's a company guy. He's a team player. He came from a team environment, which is always important to me. And so I'm a, I'm a big fan of his work and of him as a man. So he would help any locker room. I can just imagine how, how what kind of mentor he would be to some of the kids that are not just his color, not African-American only, but young talents was his, uh, Sheldon's journey has been well documented and, uh, I'm sure proud that I got to hire him. She's a credit to the wrestling business. No question. What an incredible talent too. I, for one would love to see Shelton Benjamin there. Uh, of course you can also see Shelton Benjamin and Chris masters and Mickey James and Bret Hart and Eric Bischoff at Starcast down under 
It's happening April 11th through April 14th. Ballarat, Victoria, Australia. It's our very first international star cast. We've got not one, but two wrestling shows. Mickey James is doing an all lady show called H E R. Bret Hart is bringing the Australian stampede, a super card of wrestlers from all across the world. Plus a bunch of stage shows. We got Mickey James on stage. We got Eric Bischoff on stage. And for the first time ever, I'll be on stage with Bret Hart, picking his brain about the 30th anniversary of his fabulous WrestleMania 10 match with his brother, Owen. If you can make plans, you should April 11th to April 14th, Ballarat, Victoria, Australia, meet and greets galore. You can meet all your favorites, see the matches, watch the shows. Starcast.com has you hooked up at S T A R R C A S T.com. A bracelet will get you all access to all events. So if you haven't already make plans to join us and grab yourself a gold or platinum bracelet. Yeah. Get your tickets. That's what the first step you got to do here is get a ticket. There you go. Hey, you mentioned, uh, being a mentor and Mike Jones, the third had a great question about that. And he said, JR, you hear about guys like undertaker and William Regal taking time out to help younger talent. Who are some others in the business that were good mentors to the next generation? Oh, well, Taker's in that list already. Yeah. Uh, Austin was a, believe it or not, uh, once you got it out of him, he was great at helping talents with the uh, nuances to matches. Really, really good. Triple H has been, has been really good in that area, but there are several guys. They, they take, it's, it's a matter who takes a liking to you and, and, and likes your game and sees the potential in you. Uh, and we've had a lot of guys over the years that have been really good confidants and mentors, things like that. Uh, and the ones that are usually that way, Conrad are the guys that come out of a system sports system. And, uh, even though triple H was not a did play, he, he certainly was a student, a student of the game. No doubt of that. No doubt. Of that. Uh, anyway, yeah, the. A lot of guys, I feel like that's your, that's as a top talent and you're making the top money. That's your responsibility. Help the others raise, raise them up. And, uh, I, I believe that's this day. That's a difference maker. Very important that we all continue to raise people up. You know, I, I, I was glad to get the opportunity for Shivani and I to work with Excalibur. I think it was Excalibur at the sting, uh, last two man event matches uh, a week or so ago. Uh, so we're all trying to help do our share, you know, do our part in elevating all tides, all boats, I should say. So, uh, but, you know, working with Excalibur in that, at the Sting's retirement match was a surprise for me, but a pleasant surprise. And I, and I think he and I talked afterwards. I think it's just a matter of, he was proud for the opportunity. And you notice that he, he laid out a lot in that match more than he normally does because he was absorbing information and sponging it up like anybody else in that role. So it's all good. And, uh, but I, I'm, uh, just want to be a part of the process, Conrad, you know, it's, it means something to see a talent grow yes, and, and, and become better and live their dreams, make a good living and provide for their family and be able to pay their bill at, uh, the grocery store just is so important. So anyway, uh, that's all of our obligation in life. If you're an administrator or you're a senior guy in a company. Uh, you're the head coach or whatever it may be. It's your obligation. To make those that, uh, re- report, uh, in around you and through you to get better. And there's no way other way of looking at it. It's your obligation. You took on that obligation when you got the job. I didn't know if you, you might not have known it. Certainly the fact you're obligated to teach and mentor and coach up. Coaching up's a big deal. Good at it. You can make a lot of money in, in a variety of different ways. Man, we just got a wild question from our live studio audience. I want to go to our most recent one. Hey, JR, if you could team up with. The King Jerry Lawler one last time, would you want it to be an AEW or WWE? I think you and Jerry and AEW alongside Tony would be epic. What are your thoughts on that? 
we haven't talked about Lawler a lot lately. Have you been talking to the King? How's he doing these days? What's the latest with him and his health? And is there a scenario where we could see you and him behind the desk one last time? I mean, that's intriguing. I, as a fan, I would love to see you and, and Tony Schiavone and Jerry Lawler once. That'd be awesome. <laughs> It would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that either, but it would be fun. Uh, I don't stand as co- much contact with the King as I should. Uh, last time I talked to him, he was feeling better. He's still, still getting over his ailments. His voice sounded stronger, but I've talked to him in the last three or four months where his voice didn't sound strong at all. And you wouldn't want him on television sounding like he did. He, he's better now. So, uh. You know, anytime I had the opportunity to work with Lawler, I'd take it just cause it's fun, fun night, it's not off. And Shivani and Lawler is the new, new sound, new chemistry. That would be interesting. Is it likely to happen? Heck who knows? It's business. Never say never. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to say, yeah, never say never, but, uh, it'll be a fun assignment to say the very least. And maybe. For, the, for old time's sake, we'll get that one last shot somewhere down the road. You know, it's funny that we're talking about that because Jacob had a great question too. He says, if you chose the details of your final broadcasting gig, how would you like your send off to go? Have you given that any thought? Cake. How do you cake? <laughs> well, there you go. I think we can swing that. Uh, I, I think, uh, a match like Osprey and Brian Danielson. Is along the line of how the last match I like to call sting retirement thing was special. Uh, I really haven't thought that much about, uh, what my last match would be because I'm, I'm not nearly ready to sit and think about that or, or whatever. Right. And you're kind of a, you're kind of a prisoner to the card, you know, uh, you just are. So, uh, wait and see how that's going to work out, but. A, a real good wrestling man, a, a really good wrestling that tells a story, not just chopping meat and using chairs and whips and chains and those sticks and so forth. That's all well and good, but it should not be the focal point of the contest. In my opinion, for it to be my last one, I like to call a wrestling man or a wrestling hole wins the contest. What a novel idea. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from Jay. When he was working for the cowboy, Bill Wines, Jr. said that he had a rule that if any of his wrestlers lost a bar fight, they would be fired. Did anyone actually get released because of that rule? Great question from Jason in Brooklyn. Yeah. Jason. No strict still intact. I love that. The guys, the guys were smart enough to travel together. Right. So when you, when you see a, a small handful of guys walking to a, a bar. Uh, guys like Ray Hernandez, Hercules Hernandez, and Dr. Death and Duggan, uh, and the list goes on and on. There's some bad dudes here, not your average cat. So to my knowledge, uh, if somebody was getting a little bit, uh, given too much to somebody, a civilian, uh, there's usually an intervention. In other words, the guy that was looking good got killed. By the raw numbers and they're intimidating looking guys, you know, big, strong and, 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 and relentless. So I don't think anybody ever broke that rule. I don't remember anybody getting fired, but I know that the rule stayed intact and was discussed, uh, anytime a new talent came to the territory, they got to hear the do's and don'ts. And one of the don'ts is don't ever lose a street fight. I love that. Uh, we got a lot of questions like this. I'm really glad that people are at least in tune with this. Eric green is part of our live studio audience from adfreeshows.com. If you haven't already considered that, come on, join us. The water's fine. You've been able to call other things besides wrestling. Is there anything else outside of wrestling left on your bucket list? So we know, you know, Jim, we've seen you, you know, call some Falcons games and some XFL games, and you've done some, some boxing and some MMA. Is right. there another thing on the bucket list besides wrestling you'd like to cover before you call it a career? Wouldn't mind doing some more boxing. Cause I really enjoyed it. And I worked with a guy that was considered the best color analyst in the game and Al Bernstein. Brilliant. 
simply taught me a lot about broadcasting and more specifically taught me a lot about giving me a lot of product knowledge. He was very free with this information and very unselfish. I always appreciate Al Bernstein for that. Good man. And the best there is in the business. Uh, I don't know, Conrad. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'm trying to think of things that I enjoy that I haven't broadcast. I'm not going to go to darts because I don't know the game that well, but that's things like that are intrigued. How would JR describe what he's seeing in a dark game? For example, maybe bowling things that people have a somewhat of a knowledge of, but, uh, they haven't heard me broadcast it and we all tell our stories different, but, uh, anytime I had a chance to do more football, I would do it. Um, American football. I'm not smart enough to, uh, pick up the, the Queens game, shall we say of, of soccer. And somebody's getting pissed off because I call it European football soccer. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Uh, so anyway, but no, I can't think of it. I've had a blessed career, Connie. I, I really had fun doing boxing. I found boxing to be the easiest of all the martial arts. Boxing is a lot easier to call than it's pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is very challenging. It's always a movement, always things going on. You're always trying to get to that next dot, as we always like to talk about connecting the dots. So, uh, I'm, I've really lived out all those dreams, but what I like to do more, sure. If the, if, uh, the XFL called me and Wayne Johnson said, Hey, JR, can you come do a game? Hell yeah, I can do it. That'd be great. Or maybe being the third guy in a booth or something. So anyway, football is always going to be at the top of the list of some description. Yeah. And so that I know their season's about to start and I'm excited for it. I'm always pulling for Dwayne, this project. He's, a, he's a dentist entrepreneur. I've ever been around. Let's, uh, let's do another question here. This one comes from Jonathan Adams. He's got a question about the old school. He says, Hey, JR, I hope all is well with your road to recovery. In your opinion, do you think the wrestling business would have reached the heights that it had if Ric Flair had not been as great as he was in the seventies and eighties? Clearly Jonathan is a huge Ric Flair fan. And I know that the territory days were certainly a transition period and an important period in wrestling and. He was the last great touring NWA champion. And he also had the benefit of being on the superstation that went national. How big of a, a role do you think he played in the, the boom and popularity of wrestling in the seventies and specifically the eighties? Well, he certainly contributed. Yeah. No doubt about that. He contributed big, big time. Uh, cause he was the best in the game. He was, he was the standard bearer. Want to be a star? You want to be a main event level star? Parts of Ric Flair's game's got to travel with you. So uh, that's how I look at that. Rick was a great influence to his peers. So uh, it's important. You got to have flares. And it's not just Rick. Too. There's, there are other guys, you know, uh, in these other territories that were well kept secrets. The promoters didn't want them to leave, so they kind of kept them socked away a little bit. So, uh, and then you gotta, you gotta break. I mentioned Jack Briscoe earlier. Uh, there's a piece of footage on the online where I think he locked up with Noki and it was the damnedest, most compelling thing I've seen in a long time, but you don't think Jack Briscoe silky smooth and all that good stuff. And he was, but, uh, be very physical. He was an NCAA champion. Never lost. And at the highest level of amateur competition. So uh those guys are just they're just uh come along once in a lifetime. So you need your flares in place, you need your Jack Briscoe's in place. All these guys are Stone Cold, Rocks, all these and different generations. So uh Flair certainly in any conversation would be at the top of the list or near the top of the list as far as 
wrestlers that contributed to the success of their business over the long haul. Probably nobody did it better, longer player. Well, we're looking forward to doing it better and longer with our friends at fanatics. We've got a brand new affiliate partnership with fanatics that we're excited to brag about with you guys. You heard us talking about football at the top of the show. Basketball season's heating up too. It's an easy way to support your favorite podcast. When you go to shopsportsmerch.com. you get the same great products and service and pricing that you're used to from fanatics, but it really helps our show and it costs you absolutely nothing. Is shopsportsmerch.com. You can pick up some Jags gear and support the brand new quarterback. If you believe the rumor and innuendo, Alabama's own Mac Jones, or how about Alabama's own Derek Henry going to come become a Raven shopsportsmerch.com has got all those jerseys and more. Yes. You can get that Baker Mayfield, Tampa Bay's Tampa bucks Jersey. If you're watching along with us on YouTube, you can hit that QR code. It'll take you right there. Or the episode description for today's episode has a link. Just type it right in your Google machine, shop sports, merch.com. You can shop with confidence for your favorite jerseys, caps, shirts, jackets, hoodies, and more all at shop sports, Uh, so Jim, we got a lot of questions about will Osprey and uh, you've talked a little bit on the show before about will Osprey. Here's one from Dave. What are your thoughts on will Osprey? I mean, I know that's pretty vague, <laughs> but you've seen, yeah. you've seen this guy in Japan. But you also saw Okada over there. You saw Omega over there. And you and I had dinner together like seven or eight years ago. And you were going on and on about Okada and Omega. I mean, he's sort of the next great pillar, if you will, to come over from New Japan. Is there yeah. anything about his game that makes him different than Kenny Omega and Okada to you? Well, they have a lot in common. They all seem to be, uh, uh, you know, having the natural ability to tell a story and the things that, uh, Osprey does is, it is usually based in athletic logic. And anytime you can have athletic logic, be the biggest impetus of your show of your match, uh, you got a better shot at winning and just winning the match or winning the audience or getting old. So, uh, he, Osprey is a special guy. It's, you don't see too many guys like him come along, uh, very often. So a g- great hire by Tony Khan is great that the AEW locker room welcomed as welcomed Osprey as they have jumping out of the box on a, on a big pay-per-view match, you know, uh, and the match he had with the was, I thought outstanding. I don't know what you thought about it. I thought that a hell of a match. Hell yeah. But, uh, now. And all due respect to the young Japanese lad, uh, our, our buddies moving up a notch, placing Esco with Brian Danielson. And like I said, that's got me thinking, got me talking. I just think it's going to be a tremendous outing for both those guys. And maybe more importantly, a tremendous opportunity for both of them to get over. And I think that's a. That's what you always want. You want that opportunity. If we deliver in this match, we should get over and getting over is why we're here. I'm going to get over, it's not about winning, but getting over. And I think those guys got a chance to really elevate their games and their perception by getting over, uh, when they, when they work in St. Louis. Let's do uh one here from, uh, Dylan Leahy. Jim, when it's all said and done, what do you want people to remember your career for? Have you thought about oh, that? Oh, JR, JR loved the business. Uh, you know, it was obvious that, uh, JR's passion for pro wrestling, uh, broke through all barriers. He overcame a lot to maintain a, a long career. It's hard to believe Conrad, that, uh, as I said here in uh, Jacksonville beach, Florida, that, uh, I'm 50 years in 50 years in pro wrestling. I should, I should get a, you know, sort of medal. <laughs> I've been getting paid all along. So everything's cool. So, uh, yeah, it's just, I'm lucky 50 years is a blessing and no way in hell I would have thought I'd have lasted 50 
scared when I first got started because getting started in a pro wrestling business is very challenging. And it was even more challenging then than it is now. Let's do a question here. Uh, Joe says, first of all, sir, you're a legend and you're well-respected by us fans. If you didn't know that already, but which era of wrestling did you enjoy working the most and why? And do you ever sit back and just think to yourself, damn, I'm a fucking legend. I love you, Joe. <laughs> Thanks for heaping some praise on our bow Jim today. Is there your favorite era of wrestling to watch? And then we'll go back and say your favorite era of wrestling to call, but just to watch if you were. You and I were going to sit down and fire up some wrestling from anywhere in time. What would you want to sit down and watch? I probably would watch a little mid South, uh, sure. And of course the attitude era, uh, cause it started laden so much talent, so many hall of famers, so many soon to be millionaires are still living off that money. Uh, that makes me happy. Makes me proud. So I say the attitude era and, uh, and some mid South be in my wheelhouse for that question. Uh, here's one from can't eat my everything. What do you think Hulk Hogan's legacy will be? That's an interesting question because he has become a complicated figure in recent years. Do you have a feel for when, when, when the, all the writing's done and the dust is settled? What will people remember Hulk Hogan most for do you think? Arguably the biggest star in the history of pro wrestling. Yeah. Still legacy is not going to be erased. There's not an eraser on any Booker's pencil. That's strong enough, or big enough to erase Hogan's, uh, six, uh, uh, contributions, whether you like his style or what he said in this interview or he says brother too much or whatever. Facetious. Uh, oh, he, he's always going to be known for that. He's Babe Ruth. He's a friggin' Babe Ruth of wrestling. And any way else you look at it, I think it's not very fair to Hogan. My take. I totally agree. Christopher McCollum says, as someone who grew up in the Central States territory, I was curious if JR had any stories about Bulldog Bob Brown or Pork Chop Cash or just any thoughts on that specific territory, if any. Well, they should be admired for their willingness to work for little money. They weren't making a lot of money back then. That was a tough territory to be in. So you had to love the business and love your job to make it work for you. Uh, Bob Brown's an interesting character, not a bad hand, a good psychologist. He, he wore out his welcome. He was in, he couldn't go anywhere else. Nobody really coveted hiring Bulldog Bob Brown. Now, you know, we brought pork chop into, uh, mid South at one point. I always liked him. Bobby pork chop cash. I think his son at one time was an outstanding high school running back in the Memphis area. I think, uh, but Chops was a good, he's a good, great athlete. Got a pretty good promo. So they you got buried into a territory that you couldn't dig your way out of. That's kind of what it was for those guys in central states, the guys that came through central states, some of them did pretty well based on what they learned there and then moving on. But it was a tough territory to exist in a lot of money. Uh, this is, you know, when you, when you think about all your fun moments in your career, something that I maybe forgot, but as soon as I read this question, I laughed. Chris get five eighty five over on YouTube had a great question. What inspired you to plug Skittles the way you did? It always tickled me every time I heard it on raw, man, you really did turn up the volume and hammer that read for Skittles. Was that a specific instruction or did it just become the JR way? Did anybody uh, else get tickled as we did? There's an ad lib. It was an ad lib and the Skittles people loved it. I'm sure. So, uh, uh, I can't tell you how many boxes of Skittles I got over my career. I could have, I could have supplied a snacks for a children's home. No doubt. And this, but it is an ad lib, Connie, you know, it was, it was a weekly sponsor and you want to give it a little personality. 
so forth and so on. So that's what I did. I just, it's strictly an ad lib. Sometimes those ad libs work and sometimes they don't. It's from heaven to work. Great question here from Danny Archer, 7137 over on YouTube. Who in AEW do you think would have had the best chance of success in Mid South Wrestling as a babyface? I can see MJF as a perfect territory heel, but who could have been the best babyface in that era under Bill Watt? Oh, probably Darby. Darby Allen, undersized, courageous, never quit, et cetera, et cetera. But he'd be one of them for sure. Uh, there are others, but Darby jumps out real quick at me uh, answering that question. He knows how to get over. And he can't see through his bullshit. He's willing to put his body on a severe enough line that uh, he can't be and getting a great heel that knows how to get heat, work a body part, torture somebody, hurt somebody. And in, in the performance art theory is uh, another blessing. MJF should fit that bill, no doubt. So would Darby. And I just think people. People love Darby because he has that never quit relentless. I think he's got a tattoo on his body. It says relentless attitude. Um, as you can tell, I'm a big Darby, Darby fan, big time. How could you not be? Uh, AJ Blair, 1616 says, JR, what do you, what guys do you see in AEW make a big jump up the cards? Starks, Hobbs, someone else. You know, well, let's talk about that. Sort of the next great generation. I think Hobbs has been a TNT champ. I think Starks has been a tag champ. Is there yeah. anybody else you see making that, that leap up the card? Or do you see one of those guys in the main event mix? Probably Wardlow. Be somebody I would consider putting on that list. Big, talented, athletic, a great size, great, great look. You notice him when he walks through an airport type thing. So Wardlow would be somebody that lives for me very quickly. Uh, I love, uh, I think that with consistent storytelling and entering performance that powerhouse Hobbs has a very bright future. Uh, looks great. Good attitude. Tries hard. Wants to be a star. And I, I, uh, he's reliable. Very important. Liable man who was raised right. So, uh, but Wardlow would be on that list, Connie. He's just, he's too good to pass over. Archer HHS says, what is your favorite year in wrestling history? You know, that's something that fans talk about a lot. You know, their most important year as a fan. When you think about your time as a fan, not inside the business, because I'm sure when you're just making towns every week, it all kind of runs together eventually. But was there a, a, in your fandom, like in mine, it's 89 and 97. Do you have a favorite year as your fandom where you think, man, that's when it really happened for me. And I just couldn't get enough of this stuff. Yeah, mine would be earlier than that because of the age difference in sure. you and I, sure. uh, I remember sitting home watching uh, channel six. That time it was a CBS affiliate mistaken in Tulsa. Saturday afternoons at four o'clock, they had one hour of wrestling. And they shot their big angle of featuring the uh, Kentuckians, Grizzly Smith and Luke Brown versus the Assassins, uh, Tom Ernesto and, and Joe Hamilton. They shot their big angle. And the big angle was getting color on television the hard way. And uh, mess. And the announcer, Danny Williams, on the phrase, watch out for flying chairs, uh, did believe it was real. But when he, when he got to the cut, put it open, it was grotesque. So, uh, but I can't remember what, I think Grizzly's the one that got the hard way. Grizzly was the one that was bleeding. And, uh, but that, I don't see it mark me, but it, it made an impact on me that I didn't, I still haven't gotten over. It was such a visual, so real. I didn't have to roll my eyes to, to process what I was seeing. It was real in my mind, and I could identify every every kid can identify with a little blood or a little scrape here, there, and yon. This is much more than that. This is a bloodbath, and it was too much. And they almost lost their television over it, just before they went into one of the busiest uh, seasons that they ever had. 
the busiest runs. Uh, there's, there was a pitcher in our office there in Tulsa, uh, taking over where you have pie, then those of, of the arena being packed, sold out pretty amazing. And they ran the, uh, Tulsa assembly center at that time. It's been placed long ago, but it was a really a unique thing. Uh, see that sell out crowd and how they responded that that program did nothing but draw money. And the irony of it is, and one of the blessings of a territory where you have limited television exposure is the fact that, uh, these guys took that match on the road and drew money with it everywhere they went. They just re- repeated the formula. And by the time they got to say the Carolinas, which is known as the major money drawing tag team territory that they, uh, uh, you know, they had the act down, they had it down. And that's where you bring a guy in like Watts, uh, for example, he liked the talents helping structure their own creative because if they had a personal investment in it, their cause of their egos, uh, they were le- less likely to allow it to fail extra work, extra mileage to do more. So, uh, but those guys, that's, that's what stands out in my mind. That hard way angle, uh, it was absolutely amazing. And then another one was, uh, same two, same four guys. I can't remember if it was Joe or Ernesto got to color the other side of their mask. And that was a graphic that uh, was not easily forgotten. So r- realism has always been my weakness. You know, I wasn't going to not miss that show for nothing in the world because they were doing real things that I could identify with some degree. So it was pretty cool. Very cool. Darren, it's funny, C- how that, it's funny how that says this pops back in your mind. Too, it, it is. It's a, it's a nice little uh, memory jogger. I just read a report that America is now in more credit card debt than ever before. More than $1.1 trillion. You know, my grandfather used to say there's no stress like money stress, son. Well, are you feeling that right now? Let me help. You've got a friend in the mortgage business and me, and I've helped families just like yours save hundreds of dollars a month. Seriously. We've helped listeners to this podcast, save up to 800 bucks a month at SaveWithConrad.com, We routinely help our podcast listeners consolidate all of their high interest rate credit cards into just one much lower monthly payment. Would you like to lower your monthly payments? Wouldn't it be nice to skip your next two house payments? Are you finally ready for some breathing room and peace of mind? Start saving money today with your friend in the mortgage business, me at savewithconrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And if we can't help you save some cash, we won't waste your time. You see at savewithconrad.com, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. We want to be your mortgage advisor for life. So find out how easy it is to finally get rid of your credit card debt once and for all get a much lower monthly payment and even skip your next two house payments. Let's find out how much money you can save for free at save with NMLS number three, two, four, one, six equal housing lender save with Conrad.com. Yeah. Uh, Darren C 2909 says, I'm sure this is quite an odd question, but it's always kind of bugged me. Why is it sometimes pronounced as world's heavyweight champion? And other times people say world heavyweight champion. I don't know. I think it's laziness, maybe some degree, uh, world heavyweight champion fits for me, but I'm not going to split hairs over it. We, we both know what it means. So I understand your question, but, uh, not a hill to die. On. Uh, last one here, young cancer survivor, three, nine, two shout out to that, man. Dare, I hope everything is going good with your health. Do you think Tony Khan will let Dustin celebrate with Cody if he's to win the title? If he's a free agent, will he show up to help out? I don't think he's a free agent, so I don't think we have to worry about that. But do you think there's a scenario where if Cody wins the title, Dustin makes a little cameo while working for AEW? Hate to say no, but I don't think it's likely, Conrad. Yeah. I just don't think it's likely. I might be wrong. Might be over for uh, evaluating this situation. It'd be great that the whole family was there together and that happened. Oh, yeah. I, but, but I don't know. I, 
I'm doubtful. It's because of the, the unwritten rules, uh, whether I agree with them or not in, in pro wrestling. Something I'm not doubtful about is that we will be back next week talking about that WrestleMania night one main eventer, the rock and his rise to fame in the WWF at the height of the attitude era. He entered 1998 as the intercontinental champion and a part of the nation of domination. And by the end of the year, he's the world heavyweight champion. He becomes part of the corporation. And then in 1999, he main events, the biggest WrestleMania of all time at that point against Steve Austin, he becomes very much well on his way to becoming one of the biggest stars of all time. And we're going to break down the rocks 1998 and 1999 next week here on the program. And we want to hear from you. If you've got a question, the easiest place to ask it is our YouTube. That's grilling Jr on youtube.com. Head over to the YouTube grilling Jr on youtube.com. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell and ask us a question about the rock in the comments. We're also going to be running polls over there. So you can actually pick some of our next big topics. Of course, if you sign up for adfreeshows.com, you get all these shows early and ad free. You even get to be a part of the live studio audience. Not just that, but we've got, uh, some bonus content over there. Speaking of which we have a new series that we've rolled out a few years ago called the insiders where periodically we'll sit down with someone who worked behind the scenes in professional wrestling and, uh, well, a former WWE writer, Mr. Andrew Goldstein, a friend of the show. He recently joined me for a talk over at adfreeshows.com on the insiders. He ran through his interactions with Bruce Pritchard and Batista and Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and Booker T and Michael Hayes and Brian. And wow. You can find out how his run came to an end and some funny stories along the he's way. A good, he's a good story. Andrew's a good storyteller, a smart guy. He's a wrestling fan who made it. Yes. He's a wrestling fan who dug his way behind the scenes and survived. So it's, it's gotta be one of the more entertaining. Uh, scenarios that we we've experienced. There was a, a fun pre-tape he talks about in there where, uh, William Regal was getting ready for a match and they had a story where they're chasing each other all around the, the backstage area and they run into a, a hot dog cart. Let's roll that. For me. Around TV a uh, Johnny Ace. I remember took me aside. He's like, we'll pay for, we'll pay for your dry cleaning. Don't worry. And so I'm just like scrubbing all the like excess mustard off my suit, trying to get my suit in like some sort of like workable condition. Cause dude, I had to get back on the plane and get to the next city. It wasn't a driving night. It was a plane night. So I get, so TV ends and we go to the plane and I walk up the steps. And of course, of course, which never, ever happens, but who's on the plane, who's sitting in the front seat, the fucking dead man. And wow. he and I walk past him in this soiled suit, reeking of yellow mustard and ketchup. And he he reaches out his hand and grabs me and stops me from like, you know, shuffling past him. And he goes, "Boy, you're gonna walk on this man's plane smelling like mustard." And I was like, oh, "I'm so I'm sorry, Mister. Uh, I'm sorry, Undertaker. Like, I, it's my only suit, and I got put in this vignette." And, and he goes. Get in the back of the plane. And I swear to God, I was uh, top three scares of my life. How about that? Find uh, out, get the whole interview right now over at adfreeshows.com. And while you're at it, I'm in the mood for a little ketchup and mustard. I'm going to head on over to jrsbbq.com. I know they got that Chipotle ketchup. I know they got that main event mustard. I know they got JR's red ass hot sauce. And maybe my favorite you know it, of baby. all, the all purpose seasoning, something for everybody at jrsbbq.com, right, Jim? A lot of signed, yeah, a lot of signed items, things of that nature. We're going to soon be rolling out a major promotion for our, our book. Uh, and uh, so that'll be something to look forward to, hopefully. So, you know, this the timing of my illness and being put into rehab for 13 days slowed the promotion of the book down, which is just bad timing. I can't change it. I can only work in putting a plan together to move forward. So we'll have signed books at our website, jrsbbq.com or so. And, and we will do some book signings. No doubt about that. So, uh, and I'm, I just picked up two new signings here, uh, this week, which I'll talk about next week. So one's actually here in Jacksonville. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
No, no, uh, no airport. I want to get near it. It's good. So I'm, I'm excited about getting back in the hunt there. But again, I get all this big hurry and all of a sudden I'm wore down. Uh, I can tell you flying on flying to Greensboro, even though there are two short flights, I flew from Jacksonville to Charlotte, Charlotte to Greensboro. Very challenging. I did it with all those 28 staples in my hip and bouncing around and all that stuff. I can tell you always go to the bathroom before you get on an airplane. Oh yeah. Always don't trust the lab to your, your buddy because other people got to use it too. And there's only one up front. So, uh, it's, it's challenging, but I'll make it. I will make it and it will be good when, when we do. It'll be fun. No doubt. Hit it up. If you haven't already, jrsbbq.com. They got something for everybody. And if your business targets being 25 to 54 years old, there's no better place to advertise than right here with us at advertise with jr.com. If you haven't already check us out on YouTube, ask us questions about the rock. It's grilling jr on YouTube. We're going to be back right on time. Same bat time, same bat channel talking about the rock from 98, 99 and Jim, I hope, uh, recovery continues to improve and you're moving around a little better every day. And I I can't wait, man. I'm really pumped to know that you're aiming, you're hoping your plan is to be in St. Louis for Brian Danielson and will Ospreay. Goodness gracious. What a match that's going to be. That hasn't been confirmed by TK, Tony Khan. See, when you're on the inside, you can call him TK. But whatever TK's decision is, is what I will honor and uh, be happy to do. But I'm just saying as a fan and as a broadcaster, having the opportunity to call Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay is something that you don't pass up. Don't just say, oh, okay, whatever. It's not a whatever to me. It's important. It's important for those guys. And it's important for AEW for those guys to go out there and have a masterpiece and solidify and add to their legacy. So that's what this match is about. It's a, it's a big deal, really big deal. And hopefully uh, fans will respond and watch it on pay-per-view or join us live in St. Louis. Like you said earlier, I think tickets are on sale now for that. So it's all good. AEWTIX.com is where you want to head for that. Well, Jim, I had a blast, uh, throwing the keys to our audience, looking forward to talking about, uh, rock next week and, uh, can't wait to see what's happening over the next seven days in professional wrestling. It feels like every day wake it, we wake up, there's a new story. Uh, yep. I'm sure we'll be talking about all that and much more next week, right here on grilling Jr. with the voice of professional wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Thanks for your questions, everybody. We certainly appreciate your business. We love you. And I hope you'll tune in again next week. Tell a friend about our show. Thanks and have a good day.